guys and welcome to Health of Ivy's uh, live yoga session for you guys, especially for you guys on a Sunday. Uh, I'm just going to wait for a few more people to log in and then we're going to start uh, with, uh, with the yoga session. Uh, in today's yoga session, you can expect um, to be gently stretched. Uh, you can expect an easy flow, uh, which is for all, uh, all fitness levels. You don't necessarily have to be a yoga practitioner to do this. Uh, along with me uh, and yeah by the end of the session it's a short session and by the end of the session you will feel more refreshed and like I always say um, yoga is better than coffee to wake you up um, so by the end of the session you're actually going to be feeling uh, refreshed rejuvenated and uh, and raring to go so um, and it's going it's designed to be uh, low impact uh, yet you will feel you know like uh, a buildup of sweat you you start to feel that um, you're feeling a little more flexible um, and yeah it's for everyone so we'll just wait for a few more people to log in and then we'll start. Also uh, at the end of the session uh, I'm going to be taking questions um, and, uh, and you know whatever questions you have related to yoga, related to what we've done, you can actually uh, leave them in the comments below and I'll be able to uh, actually answer them. I'm just waiting for a few more people to join in. And then, and then we'll be able to begin. <clears throat> and meanwhile, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I my name is Pragya Bhatt, and uh, I'm a yoga teacher here in Bangalore. And I used to work for Healthify Me uh, a few years ago, and uh, I actually used to do these sessions regularly. And you can expect to see a lot more of these sessions in the coming few weeks. Um, and these are actually designed uh, for, for you guys, for the Health of I Me uh, clients so that you can have a better yoga experience and so that um, you can also, uh, you know, kind of have your doubts cleared about yoga asanas, about the kind of plans that you're on, about your fitness journey, about your yoga journey. Um, so this is our way of actually uh, coming closer to you, um, getting you yoga live, you know, in the comfort of your own home and having you practice along with us. So we hope to build a better relationship with our clients through yoga sessions like this. Uh, and uh, yeah, we hope to bring you a better, more holistic yoga experience, fitness experience with all of this. So uh, I think it's a good time to begin. Um, a lot of people have actually started uh, logging in. I think we have enough people logged in. So it's a good time to begin. So those of you who uh, have actually been receiving the notifications, you would have your Mac set out. Uh, remember to get a water bottle, remember to get a towel, um, and let's get onto the mat. So I'm just going to come up and come to my mat. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with sitting up straight. So start with your hands on your knees and completely relax. So relax your shoulders, close your eyes. Start to observe your breath. Don't change your breath. You're not inhaling forcefully and exhaling forcefully, just observe your natural breath. Try to let all the thoughts go, just observe your thoughts as well. Let the thoughts come, let the thoughts go. With every exhalation, feel that your body is relaxing more and more. Now keeping your eyes closed, bring your hands together in the Namaskar Mutra. Start to rub your hands together vigorously, generating heat in between your palms. And then place them on your closed eyelids. Rub your hands across your face. And with a few blinks, open your eyes. So we're going to start a little slow here. Let's start with loosening the neck a little bit. So you're going to inhale as your head goes back. Make large circles with your neck. And exhale as it comes forward. Push your chin into your chest. And continue this for a couple of times. Large, slow circles with your neck. The neck and the shoulders are usually very stiff for people. Because we're staring into laptops all day long. We're hunched over laptops all day long. So it's important to do this movement daily, even if it seems like a very simple movement to do. It's a movement that is very effective in keeping a 
lot of spinal problems that way. Now, let's go in the other direction. Inhale as your head goes back. And exhale as it comes forward. Good. Now, inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Inhale, look up. And exhale, look down. Once again, inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Now, come to the center and let's look from side to side. So, look as far over your right shoulder as you can. And then, look over your left shoulder as far as you can. And continue this movement several times. Again, don't hold your breath. The whole idea is to relax the body. The more you relax the body, the more flexible the body becomes. Now, come back to the center. Face me. And now bring your ear as close to your shoulder as you can. And then to the other side. This move, this, this particular movement seems very easy. But you'd be surprised at how many people are just unable to stretch the side of the neck. And if you're one of those people, then you need to do this movement every day. Good. Now, stop the practice. Now, you're going to interlock your fingers together and extend the arms up and push the arms back. Tighten your elbows. And keep breathing. Here we have a tendency to really tighten the abdomen, have a tendency to lock the jaws and the neck. But keep it simple and keep it loose. And now release the arms and place your right hand on the left knee and twist back. And here also look as far over your left shoulder as you can. Lift the chest up, lift the sternum up. And then come back to the center. And once again, you're going to interlock your fingers together, extend the arms up. And just this movement, a lot of people, a lot of you guys will not be able to push the arms back. But try, try to push the arms back, extend your armpits up. It's like one big stretch, uh, the first thing that you do in the morning. Now you're going to release the arms again and place the left hand on the right knee and twist to the other side. Remember, you're seated flat on the floor, both your hips. Bones, your sitting bones are on the floor and you're looking as far over your shoulder as you can. And slowly come forward. Now, place your hands on the floor and you can slowly walk your hands forward. Keep the chest open. Don't hunch your back here. So keep the chest open and start to walk the hands forward. And place your forehead on the floor. If possible, place the forehead on the floor. And slowly walk back. And now you're going to place your elbows on the floor. The right hand and the right elbow on the floor. Keep your opposite knee on the floor also. A lot of you will have a tendency of lifting the other knee up. Place it on the floor. And then extend the other arm out also. Your arm and your ear should be in one line and you can look up. This will further stretch your, your uh, spine and your neck. Now come back and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So again, make sure your elbow and your arm, uh, your hand are on the floor. And then extend your other arm up and out. You're opening the chest, looking up. Good. And come up. Now, just by doing these simple moves, a lot of you would be feeling a little taller. The chest might be open for a lot of you. Your shoulder blades will feel a sense of uh, refresh, a, a little rejuvenation. Um, and the tightness that was there just five minutes ago would like not be there anymore in your body. So, now we're going to continue. Come on all fours. So, your hands on the floor, your knees on the floor. And now we're going to start to stretch uh, the spine even more. So slightly more, now we're going to do the cat-cow stretch. So what you're going to do is you're going to push your belly button to the floor and look up. 
And this is the best thing you can do for your spine. So you're going to look up. And then as you exhale, you're going to push the chin into your chest, curve the back, pull the tailbone in. And then again, you're going to push the belly button to the floor and look up. And then exhale, push your chin into your chest, curve the back, pull the tailbone in. Once again, inhale, look up. And exhale, push your chin into your chest, curve your back, pull the tailbone in. And one last time, you're going to inhale and look up. And exhale, push your chin into your chest, curve your back, pull the tailbone in. And come back to your base position. Now, you're going to keep your hands on the floor, toes on the floor, and slowly start to lift your knees up and push your abdomen close to the knees so that the back is straight. And then slowly start to one by one straighten the legs also. So you're in your Parvatasana. A lot of you might call this downward dog also. So lift your heels up in the downward dog and then slowly push the heels down. Again, lift the heels up and slowly push the heels down. Now, you're going to look at the place in between the hands and bring the right leg forward in between the hands. Place the back knee on the floor and push the hips down further and feel that stretch on the groin, on the thighs, maybe even on the lower back. It's okay, some of you may not have been able to place the foot in between the hands, but that's perfectly okay. So stay here with that stretch, continue to push the hips down. Don't stay here, push the hips down. And then we're going to switch legs. So you're going to take the right leg back and bring the left leg forward and place the back knee on the floor. And then again, push the hips down. Remember, it's a Sunday morning, so you want a gentle stretch. And a gentle stretch is actually what is going to feel, make, leave you feeling refreshed at the end of the session. Now, you're going to bring the other leg forward. And now just hang here. Allow the top of the head to fall forward. Your hands do not have to touch the floor. Your upper body is just loose and relaxed. Now slowly, vertebra by vertebra, roll yourself up. And then when you're completely erect, then take your hands and lift them all the way up. And stretch up. As far up as you can. Continue to breathe. Do not hold your breath. And now slowly exhale and bring your hands down again. Now try and touch your fingertips to the floor. If you are unable to do that, bend your knees. And now take the right leg back. For those of you who are familiar with the Surya Namaskar, we are getting into the Surya Namaskar. Take the left leg back. Now you're in your plank posture. Make sure in the plank you're not up here. You're not down here. Your hips and your shoulders are in one line. Thighs are tight, knees are straight. Now you're going to place the knees on the floor. Chest in between the hands and chin on the floor. Now inhale. Bhujakasana. Now place your toes on the floor, exhale, Parvatasana. Now inhale, bring the right leg forward just like you did a minute ago. Exhale, left leg forward. And then inhale, bring the hands all the way up. Again, stretch up. Keep your breath easy and flowy. And now you're going to exhale and come forward again. And we'll go through the same movements on the left side. So now you're going to take the left leg back. And then the right leg back. Again, you're in the plank posture. And then you're going to place your knees, chest and chin on the floor. And if you are able to do this posture, then you can bring yourself completely down on the floor. Now inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Parvatasana. Some of you might call this the downward dog. Then inhale, bring the left leg forward. Exhale, right leg forward. And inhale, take your hands all the way up. And back again. Good. 
so that was one round of Surya Namaskars. Your body now should already feel more awake, you should feel more energetic, uh, and you should not feel tired at all because the great thing about yoga versus any other form of exercise is that it does not leave you feeling tired. In fact, it leaves you feeling more energized. So now let's do a few standing asanas. So start, let's start with the triangle pose, the trikona asana. So take your legs about three and four, four and a half feet apart and you're going to turn the right leg out. Now inhale, take your hands all the way up. Exhale, take your hands out to the sides. Now, your right leg is turned out, so you're going to reach out to the right side. And then slowly, reach out, reach out, reach out, and then place your right hand anywhere you can reach on this right leg. You don't have to push it to the floor. Place the hand anywhere that you can comfortably place it, and look up. Look at the left hand. The left hand is reaching up to the ceiling. Look up. Push your hips forward and feel that stretch on the groin, on the hamstrings, maybe on the hip, perhaps even on the shoulders. Now come up, hands down. Now turn the right leg in and we'll do the same thing on the left side. Now you're going to inhale, take your hands all the way up. Exhale, take the hands out to the sides. And now the left leg is turned out, so you're going to reach out to the left side and really reach out. As you can see, I'm extending the left side of my body as much as I can. And then slowly you're going to place your hand Anywhere that you can reach on the left leg, take the right hand up, push the hips forward, and look up. Keep your gaze on your right fingertips. Now, they, they, both sides of the body feel very different. On the right side, you may have been able to do it very easily. Here, the stretch may be slightly different. And slowly come back and hands down. And we're going to do one more posture, which is the warrior posture, which a lot of you may be familiar with. So you're going to keep both feet facing forward, and now turn the right leg out. And then inhale, take your hands all the way up. Exhale, take the hands out to the sides. Now bend the right leg until the knee is directly over your right ankle. Push the hips forward, lift the chest up, arms out to the sides. Your spine is perpendicular to the floor and hold this. You should feel a burn. Slowly there's going to be uh, some kind of burn happening on the thigh. You're, with this posture you're toning the thighs, you're stretching the hamstrings, you're opening the groin. And slowly straighten the leg and from here let's go back into Trikonasana. So you, let's place the hand, the right hand anywhere you can reach on the leg and look up again. For those of you with back pain, this is an excellent posture for lower back pain. Now, slowly come up and hands down. And now, we're going to do the warrior posture on the left side. So bring the right leg in, left leg out. Now, inhale, take your hands all the way up. Exhale, take your hands out to the sides. And now start to bend your left knee until you feel that the knee is right over your left ankle. Make sure your hips are pushed forward. You should not be hinging back on the hips. Hips are pushed forward. Your thigh is descending down so that it's parallel to the floor. Open the chest, open the hip, and breathe. We tend to hold our breath here. We tend to tighten the abdomen here. Try not to do that. And then slowly straighten the leg. And from here, let's go into Trikonasana once again. And the Trikonasana is an asana that you should do every day. I do it every day because it opens up the hip, it opens up the lower spine, opens up the chest. Good. And come up and hands down. And then walk both feet in. And now shake the legs out, shake the hands out and feel, are, do you feel better in your body? Do you, just these two standing asanas, they've made a lot of difference because they have stretched. Uh, the hamstrings, the thighs, uh, the glutes, the groin. So just this much will make a huge difference to how you're moving and how you're feeling in your body right now. Now, let's have a seat. And we're going to do the Bhadra Konasana, butterfly posture. So bring your feet together and try to push your, your knees down to the floor. And it's okay if you're up here, that's also fine. You still want to hold your, uh, your toes and try to flap the legs safely. This is a great stretch for the groin. 
At the end of a very busy day when you've just been sitting on a chair, uh, you want to make sure that you open the hips up like this, you open the groin up like this. And for those of you who can, try to lift the chest up, lift the sternum and come forward, come forward. See if you can touch the floor with your forehead. If a, a lot of you may be flexible enough to go all the way down. And inhale, come up. Once again, go down. And inhale, come up. One last time, go ahead and go down. And inhale, come up. For a lot of yoga postures, you may not be able to go to the final posture at the, at the, uh, in, in the, the first time that you do it. So what you want to do is repetitions like this. Go as far forward as you can, then come up. Go far, as far forward as you can, and then come up. And slowly, this is uh, a way that you can have your body open up, and this is a safe way that your body can open up. Okay, now let's continue to stretch the groin a little bit. So extend the legs as wide apart, like in a V position, as far out as you can. Now for me, uh, because I've been practicing yoga for many, many years, it's possible for me to remain within my mat. I would be happy to see how many of you can do the same thing. Now most of us are probably leaning back like this. Very few people are actually able to place the hands forward. But I want you guys to all try to place the hands forward and try to come forward. That's the only way the groin is going to stretch. That's the only way the tailbone will be moving forward. And the groin also pushes down. And you're able to push the thighs more firmly into the floor and maintain a stability in this posture. Now walk your hands forward. Do as much as you can because that's the only way to do it safely. Now slowly walk back. Now place both hands on either side on the floor of the right leg. And walk your hands forward here also. Make sure you're seated flat on the floor. The left leg should not be coming up. Leg is placed firmly on the floor. And you're walking your hands forward. Here there's a stretch on the lower back. Your upper back may feel a stretch as well. And stay here. For those of you who are a little more flexible, place your forehead as close to the, uh, to the leg as you can. If you can touch your forehead with your knee, go ahead and do that. And go ahead and come up. Walk your hands back and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And gently reach forward. Remember the left leg might be tighter than the right. So you might not be able to go as far down as you did with the right. But that is okay. For those of you who are a little more flexible, go ahead and place your forehead on the knee. And slowly come up. Now bring your feet together. Shake the legs out a little bit. And now go ahead and lie down on the floor. Lie down with your legs wide apart, hands away from your body. And then slowly close your eyes. And start to inhale and exhale. Just long inhalations and long exhalations. Close your eyes and just surrender to the floor. Close your eyes and start to monitor the feelings in your body. Is there any ache or any pain anywhere? Do you feel a tightness or a dullness, dullness anywhere? Keep inhaling and exhaling. Also see if you feel a sense of ease and looseness and flexibility in any, in any part of the body. The blood is circulating more now than it did at the beginning of the session. So try also to compare the state of your body back then to how you feel right now. There is definitely a change. Make a note of that change. Now keeping your eyes closed, softly and slowly, turn to the right side. Do not open the eyes, don't be in a hurry. And then use your left hand to bring yourself up to any comfortable seated meditative 
Devasana. Keep your eyes closed. Sit with your back straight, your hands on your knees. This is how we started the session. Keep inhaling and exhaling. Now make a mental note of how you feel now and compare it with how you were feeling at the beginning of the session. Do you feel that your back is more straight now? Do you feel energized now or do you feel tired now? Can you actually have a sense of the blood flowing through the groin, through the thighs, through your back, through your chest? Do you feel that the neck is longer? Do you feel that you're sitting up straighter? Without opening your eyes, bring your hands together in the Namaskar Mudra. Slowly start to rub your hands together and then rub them together even faster, generating heat in between your palms. And then place them on your closed eyelids. Allow the heat from the palms to sink in to your eyelids. Rub your warm hands across your, hand, uh, across your face. Enjoy the warmth on your face. Then drop your hands back to your knees. And with a few blinks, open your eyes. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope you're actually feeling uh, a lot better now than you were just about half an hour ago. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the session, uh, there is going to be a question answer round. I'm going to walk a little forward, sit a little bit forward um, to take any questions that you may have. So if you have any questions about yoga, about Healthify Me, um, about what we've done today, um, please feel free to ask. Um, okay, um, someone called the Indian Philosopher is asking, can I do yoga in a break of two to three sessions during the day? Uh, okay, so if you mean, um, can I do two to three sessions of yoga during the day? Uh, yes, you definitely can. Um, uh, like sometimes a lot of people like to do pranayama in the evening or asana in the evening. They like to do, uh, you know, like asana in the morning, like they try to uh, like try to split up uh, the yoga practice uh, simply because of a lack of time or uh, because it's it's not so convenient to do you know everything all at one go. So yes, it's definitely possible to break it up. Uh, what time is to do you yoga or exercise? Okay, Gaurav is asking this question. So Gaurav, according to me, any time is a good time to do yoga. But I would always recommend um, the practical aspect is the um, that you, if you do it first thing in the morning, it usually gets done. Uh, if you are going to work, if you have a hectic uh, work day, you're usually too tired to come home and do yoga. So the best thing, um, in my opinion, the best time to do yoga is the first thing in the morning. Get it done with. Um, do and yoga is like so delicious and so easy to do first thing in the morning uh, that you should actually just just do it first thing. Uh, in the evening, you usually will not be able to uh, like find the time or the inclination. Is it good to do yoga on an empty stomach? Shri is asking. Uh, it's good to do yoga on a light stomach. Okay, now a lot of people think that empty stomach um, means you know you shouldn't eat anything before yoga. Now, if you are uh, actually feeling hungry when you're in your yoga class, you're not going to be able to focus on yoga. I always suggest have like a little banana about 15 minutes before you do your yoga practice. Um, you, should not, um, uh, you should not be starving, nor should you be too full for movement. So this whole idea of like empty stomach, empty stomach means it should be a light stomach. Not that you should be starving because if, you, if you're thinking about food, if you're hungry, you'll only think about that. You will not be able to do your yoga. Uh, Mamta is asking, I can't sit on the floor. Okay. So Mamta, there are many ways that you can still do yoga. If you cannot sit on the floor, you could use a bolster or a pillow and sit on that and then do your exercises. You could sit on a chair. There's something called chair yoga uh, that you can do. So um, my philosophy is that anyone can do yoga and uh, uh, you know, like there's so many um, resources online 
uh, which you can uh, you know which you can refer to um, uh, you know to, for you to do yoga if you're interested in yoga there are so many ways uh, for us to help you to do yoga and for for you to actually be able to do all the exercises with no problems uh, oh I'm I ate breakfast so can't do okay um, okay so yes if you've had breakfast then you cannot um, especially if it's a heavy Sunday morning breakfast then you should not be doing the yoga with us um, Hi, can we have yoga lessons daily by her? Sanjay Arora wants to know, okay, by her, okay, by me. Um, we can definitely try, Sanjay. So uh, for all of all of you guys who've joined and who are members of Healthify Me, who are subscribed to Healthify Me plans, this is uh, something that we're looking at doing because we want to make yoga accessible to many of you, to a lot of you who, are, who have uh, questions and who have queries and who genuinely want to bring yoga to their daily lives. We are trying to, um, you know do that and yes we're gonna have more of these uh, so please stay tuned and uh, and yeah we hope to do this more um, what's your opinion on power yoga uh, trendsetter 38 I like all kinds of yoga I um, think that all kinds of yoga is good I think we should all be practicing the yoga that we like I I think yoga is great whether it's power yoga Iyengar yoga Ashtanga yoga Vinyasa yoga all yoga is good and we should all be practicing yoga all the time. How does Surya Namaskar help for body fitness? Okay, Raja. Raja has asked, how, how does Surya Namaskar uh, help for fitness, for body fitness? Surya Namaskar is the best exercise for you. When One round of Surya Namaskar, you take care of your flexibility, of your strength, uh, of your metabolism, uh, of your blood circulation, of your even relaxation. So the Surya Namaskar is the best exercise for you. If you're looking at fitness, real fitness, holistic fitness, do the Surya Namaskars. Hi, my body is really stiff. Can I do yoga? I would love to do it. Everybody, Smriti has asked, Smriti Sharma. Smriti, everyone can do yoga. If your body is too flexible, not at all flexible, just right flexible, yoga is for everybody. And yoga is not just for your body, it's for your mind also. So, you know, it doesn't matter the physical state that you're in, you should practice yoga for your mind as well. Yoga for rehabilitation for ankle injury, movie buff has asked, yes. Um, so a few things that you can do is just, you know, ankle rotations, moving the ankle back and forth, uh, foot back and forth. Um, you should try just, you know, walking, um, walking forward and backward. So these are a few things which are very common. Uh, and, and these are things that your physiotherapist might have told you. Um, maybe your doctor would have told you, but these are actually yoga moves, you know, ankle rotations and moving your ankle back and forth. All of these are yoga moves that you can do for your ankle. Okay. You, uh, Bajaj cannot sit cross-legged okay uh, so like i mentioned before you can sit on a chair you can sit with your legs uh, extended out uh, you don't have to be able to sit cross-legged initially but yes with consistent yoga practice you will be able to sit cross-legged can we do yoga with stomach full of water i would suggest that you do not uh, do yoga with a stomach full of water or food because it restricts movement now when your stomach has food or it has water in it uh, and you're doing your vasanas the stomach walls push against whatever is inside the stomach and that is not good for you so um, i would recommend that you wait for the water to digest uh, for the food to digest and then practice yoga can you teach yoga for gastritis yes of course we can and maybe we can have a session for that uh, exclusively yoga to cure sinusitis yes pranayam is great to cure sinusitis so you can do uh, like anulom vilom pranayam you can do deep breathing you can do kapal bhati all of these are really good for sinusitis i am hypothyroid patient want to reduce stomach age 45 okay uh for stomach reduction and and for thyroid the best exercise again is surya namaskars um if many of you might be following me on social media um you you know that i have been doing the 30 surya namaskar challenge in the last month now so the more surya namaskars you do the better it is for you it cures thyroid issues it cures um even issues of breathing like sinusitis we mentioned it cures migraine uh, gastritis all of these are um uh, are like uh, you know uh, things that can be uh, benefited from surya namaskar that can even be cured and managed uh, through the practice of surya namaskar and if you if you do have a tummy and you want to shape up nothing like the surya namaskar should we empty our bowel before yoga or 
as soon as you get up please suggest i would suggest emptying your uh, you know uh, bowel before you do yoga that is the best way of doing yoga yes does yoga help in weight loss or is it only for flexibility chinmoy chinmoy if you look at my before after picture you will be astonished and that is only um, with yoga yoga helps with weight loss yoga helps with flexibility yoga helps with everything my fitness journey is only because of yoga will yoga help someone who has lower back pain yoga is the only thing that will help you if you have lower back pain uh, ask any good holistic doctor right now even for slip disc issues um, for disc fuse, fused uh, disc, disc issues um, any kind of issues with your backbone yoga is the only thing that's helping is yoga work for weight gain uh, sunita has asked yoga for weight gain now this is a question that we do not get very frequently now yoga can help the reason that yoga helps for weight gain is because yoga works on your metabolism now for those people who are very thin or very fat what is out of balance is your metabolism uh, to get your body back to a healthy shape to a healthy weight you need to uh, uh, you need to work on your metabolism and the only known uh, exercise or uh, form of movement that will help metabolism is yoga yoga works directly on your metabolism and that is why it can help you with weight gain as well I have periods, uh, periods related issues. Please tell me some yogasanas to cure it. Okay, so uh, that Vibhuti for uh, for menstrual issues, <clears throat> there are many things that you can do. Standing asanas are great uh, for for menstruation issues, but we need to know exactly what your issues are, and only then can we, you know, tell you which yogasanas are helpful. Is yoga helpful for hip reduction? Arush Verma. Of course, I like I said, yoga can uh, brings your entire body back to um, uh, a balanced state. And if your hips are too wide or too narrow, yoga helps in uh, bringing that back uh, to uh, to normal. Does yoga help with patients with Parkinson's? Yes, it does. Because of yoga's connection with the mind and body, because of yoga's influence on the nervous system. Yoga can help with any uh, uh, diseases or conditions related to the nervous um, to the nervous system. So yoga is a very underrated uh, form of therapy that uh, that we are now just starting to explore. But yes, a regular yoga practice from your uh, childhood helps in not getting these issues. And if you do have somebody who has these issues, a regular yoga class working on mind body connection will definitely help. Gap of time between breakfast and yoga. If you've had a heavy breakfast or any heavy meal, four hours. If you've had a light meal, two hours. Evening time for yoga for me, but having tea by 6 p.m., which is the right time then to do yoga at evening. Have a small cup of tea at 6 p.m. You can do yoga at 6.10. Small cup of tea. Don't have a mug of tea. This yoga is beneficial for fibroid issues. Yes, yoga is excellent for any kind of issues related to the women or men's uh, reproductive system which yo yoga good for running and for deep breathing for deep breathing of course pranayam long inhalations long exhalations um, uh, kapal bhati uh, anulom vilom all of these are, are good for your breathing and uh, for running you need to do all the standing asanas okay guys um we've actually uh, gone over time thank you for all the questions that you have keep the questions coming um, also, uh, if you've really enjoyed the sessions, all of you who've registered for the session will get a, uh, a feedback form. Please fill the feedback form uh, because we want to know what you want to see. What is it that we can do to help you? What is it that we can, uh, how can we modify these sessions so that they are beneficial for you? So please fill out the feedback form. We want to know uh, how to make these uh, things better. We also want to know uh, what is it that you liked about, about this session. Uh, please let me know. Uh, also, for those of you who don't know me, let me introduce myself again. My name is Pragya Bhatt. I'm a Health of IME yoga instructor. I'm back after a long break from Health of IME. You can find me on all social media. Um, you can find me on the Health of IME social media accounts. My name is Yoga with Pragya on Instagram uh, and on Facebook. Uh, and I will link uh, to my Instagram uh, down below. Uh, please follow me for any kind of um, uh, yoga related knowledge issues that you have uh, and I will try to provide you with a solution for all your queries. 
meanwhile you can also reach out to me on the health of i me media uh, social media uh, pages um and what we're trying to do is just to help you in any way that you can that we can uh and in any way that you need uh, for us to help you um so do let us know uh, any queries any comments and i hope to see you again soon and thank you so much for attending thank you